Good afternoon, folks. Well, today I want to answer a consistent question that I get. How do you sharpen your knives, Joe? I have already touched on this a little bit about two or three months ago. I did a video on how to maintain or how I maintain curved blades, whether it's curved, kind of like a Nesmic style or has a recurve in it. I will put a link to that video in the, in the description of this one if you want to check that out. What we're going to cover today is much the same, but we're going to hit up the traditional style straight edge in the ones just with a little bit of a belly up towards the tip. Why do I feel like hitting this up again? Well, I had an idea. There is one part about sharpening a knife, at least the way I do it, that is really hard to describe. And I've heard it said before I've made that video and while I was learning to sharpen a knife, I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube on how on how to sharpen knives and you know a lot of folks would say it. When you get the angle right, you'll hear it. There's just the right noise. And you know, how do you how do you relate that through a YouTube video? Well, I had an idea about how to relate that sound, that correct sound to you guys. Hopefully it will work. Today we're going to give it a try. So anyway, without too much rambling, let's go ahead and talk about how I sharpen my knives. First off, let's run over the list of equipment that I that I use, that I suggest to folks to use. The main three items that I use here for maintaining my blades, whether it be curved or not, are these two Lansky ceramic rods. This brown one is what they consider a medium grit. This white one is what they consider a fine grit. To be honest with you, I use this brown one by far the most. I usually just skip the white and move on to one of my most used items, which this is just a homemade leather strop. As you can see, there's a couple other strops here, up here at the top of the screen, down here at the bottom. We will go over those shortly. We are going to go over several different sharpening systems today that I, I use all of them in various applications But these three right here in the center of your screen are what I use by far the most and in saying I use them the most nine times out of ten I will start with this gray or brown ceramic rod from Lansky again and then jump straight up to the strop here Every once in a while depending on the type of blade what blade it is and just how much time I have I will transition from this brown ceramic rod to the white one and then on to the strop and if I'm in a really big hurry, honestly folks, I will just use the brown ceramic rod and move on. Now the edge, while it will be hair popping sharp, it still will be a little bit toothy. That's what the strop's for is to kind of get rid of that toothy nature of it. But if I'm in a big hurry, I just use this and move on with life. Anyway, let's introduce a few other pieces of equipment here. And if by chance all you're interested in is the strops, skip up towards the end of this video. I will go over these, all four of these, at, at the very end. But in my opinion, these are my must-have items as far as maintaining a blade. These two Lansky ceramic rods, a strop of some kind, you'll need some uh, Jeweler's Rouge or uh, honing compound, whatever you want to call it. This is just green. I believe it's from Bark River. And this, honestly, folks, I forget what this is called. It's like an easy eraser or something like that. This is also put up by Lansky. What it does is, as you can see, those fine gray lines, that is actually metal that was removed from that edge. And over time, that will completely fill up the pores, which will really reduce the efficiency of these ceramic rods. What this does, you just rub it along there. And they've done something to this that it reaches into those pores and just kind of grabs that metal out. It makes that ceramic rod almost like new. Not completely. You will eventually have to replace this rod. But this easy eraser or whatever it's called will greatly increase the life of your ceramic rod. Another consistent question that I get that goes along with the same question of how, how do I how do I learn how to sharpen my knife? Well, it is, you know, I've got this, you know, high dollar knife, you know, $100, $200 knife and I don't want to screw up the edge learning how to, to maintain it. Well, that is a really good point of view to have. So what I recommend First and foremost, go to Walmart and get a three, or, this is three or four dollars at Walmart. It's an Ozark Trail or something like that. Like I said, it's about four dollars, I think. You know, you can practice on this thing all day long and even if you totally or royally mess it up, you're not gonna be out a bunch of money. Let's address the question about finding your angle on one of these ceramic rods. Your first step, and you will eventually get with some practice where you don't even need to do this step, you'll just know it by feel. You'll get to know the angle on your knife and it will just become muscle memory and you'll go right for it. You'll rely on that sound instead of on sight to know if you're hitting it right. Just lay it flat on your ceramic rod and tilt it up until the shadow right at the point of your edge between the rod goes away. So you're looking at right about there. I hope you guys can see this. And then you start going. And just follow that same angle as you move forward. And pick a number that's comfortable for you. You know, whether it be 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever. 
flip it over. I wouldn't recommend going too high or you will get the sides of your knife uneven. And then do it in reverse. And you will get to where maintaining the same angle will just become natural. And go from there. Now, let's concentrate on the sound. Doing it by sight and removing the shadow between your edge and your ceramic rod will quickly become something you don't even have to concentrate on. That will get you super close to the right angle. What I want to focus on is the sound because as you get more experienced, you won't really even have to look at what you're doing. I do recommend keeping an eye on what you're doing or you'll end up cutting yourself. But you guys know what I mean. You folks may be wondering what this is. All I've done is I have attached a little MP3 recorder with a mic. I've attached the mic via some Gorilla Tape to the ceramic rod itself. So hopefully those vibrations will come through more clear this way. Visually line up your angle and I'm going to be quiet now and hopefully this will come through more clear. That is an example of how it should sound. Now let's go ahead and go too steep and get that noise. See how the sound is a lot better? Very similar sound, but it's a lot more better. Go too steep with that. Now this is what it sounds like when your angle is too shallow or too flat against the length of the blade. Now what's going on here is you're riding on the upper part of your edge bevel there. And the sound is a lot more crisp. So what you're looking for Notice how that sound is a lot more crisp or a little bit louder. What you're looking for is a medium between that dull hollow noise and that really crisp hollow noise. You're looking for a basically dead center of that and your ear will get attuned to that and you'll be able to sit there and watch TV and by muscle memory sit there and hone your blade. Now for the next step let's talk strops. As you can see there's several examples here. This is the style that I recommend for everybody. This is a good starter point. This is nothing more than like oak molding, cheap stuff from Lowe's and a cheap piece of leather that's been finished out so it's fuzzy on one side. You take some stropping compound or jeweler's ruse, whatever you want to call it. You don't need a huge amount. I can't see my viewfinder. There we go. And it is the exact same process as with a ceramic rod in finding your angle. Just go until you don't see a shadow anymore. Just a light amount of pressure with your finger up here just to keep that angle correct and just pull back. Now the ceramic rods, as I mentioned, they will get it. Your blade hair popping sharp. What the strop does is it takes it a step further, kind of removes that toothiness or that sandpapery type leftovers on that edge and it will help you achieve an edge where we get nice smooth cuts. And just repeat this for five minutes or so, five or six lengths on each side, maybe ten, and just whatever number you feel comfortable. Nice and hair popping sharp. That is the short on how I maintain my knives. Grind doesn't matter. I use basically the same process all the way through, whether it be saber ground, scandy, convex, or hollow ground. I use the same tools for maintaining my knives, no matter what the grind is. Well, folks, that's how I recommend maintaining knives. That's how I do it. Obviously, that's going to be how I recommend other people do it. That is a list of the tools and the equipment. Again, all that stuff will be also listed in the description of this video. I hope I haven't confused the situation for you anymore, because I know when you're first starting out learning how to sharpen a knife, it can be relatively confusing. People use terms and try to describe things in different ways. That I can really leave you going, huh? So I hope that's helped someone out there. If you have any further questions, please hit up the comment section and feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. We got a lot of knowledgeable folks hanging, hanging around this channel, so I know if I can't answer it, someone else out there probably can as well. So guys, if you see a question, 
feel free to chime in and answer that question for that person, even if you disagree with me. Because like I said before here, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat and likely most of them work. So truly, just because I do it one way doesn't mean your way is wrong. And even beyond that, people understand things in different ways. So I'm describing it one way and it may make no sense to you. Just having another perspective, another person describe it, and even if it's the exact same process described by somebody else, it may make sense better to someone else. Like I said, I hope this has helped you guys out there. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please do give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it very much. There's also a subscribe button down there. I'm sure you guys know that. Please make use of it if you haven't so far. And like I just suggested, please make sure to stop by the comment section and chime in on this thought process. Anyway, folks, thanks again very much for being here, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.